Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could print the perfect person? Uh, sorry, Bruce, you're, you're not in this one. Very low DPI. <laughs> Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech from your favorite movies, TV shows, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? This week, we're diving into the world of three-dimensional printing technology. In the 1985 sci-fi comedy, Weird Science, two nerdy high schoolers somehow managed to design the perfect woman and turn her into a living, breathing, aerobicizing person. Given the proper software, design skills, and maybe a bit of scientific voodoo, <laughs> making a human being shouldn't be too difficult, right? I spoke with Will Smith from Tested.com to find out exactly where we are with 3D printing technology. Will making a human ever be as easy as hitting Command-P? Lacey Green from Sex Plus also chimes in with what Gary and Wyatt would need to consider while creating the ultimate woman. So tell us about the process of 3D printing. It's basically like a 2D printer, except for instead of the, the print head moving back and forth in one axis, it goes forward, back, and side to side, and then goes up and down as well. So what it does is lays a small layer of plastic or chocolate or whatever it is you're printing onto a bed and then lowers up the lowers the platform a little bit and does it again and lowers the platform does it again until you have a you know printed figurine or golf ball or liver model whatever it is you want what kind of materials do you use within the 3d printing process there there's a ton of different uh, materials that are available you, um, most common is abs probably which is a petroleum based plastic uh, people are also printing with pla which is i think cornstarch based um, there's some water soluble stuff that people can print with so you can use that as a support material to hold up the, the other, you know, more traditional plastics and then drop it in boiling water and the, and the, the, the sugar-based stuff will just dissolve away. So you'll have a, a model that comes out of a block of nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you can also print chocolate, you can print, um, some people are printing sugar. Uh, there's, a t there's a ton of different things you can print. People are even printing like living cells at this point. Yeah, that was something I was going to ask you about recently because I've seen things like, you know, they do cloning type stuff and I've seen ears being grown on mice, but where are we in the whole printing of organic material situation? Uh, it's it's really, really in its infancy. So um, recently some uh, researchers in Pennsylvania have figured out how to print basically a sugar lattice and then they put a gel around that sugar lattice and then inject cells into that. Um, and what that does is it solves the problem uh, of, of printing living cells. When you lay down a layer of cells, there's no support infrastructure, no vascular system to supply blood and nutrients and oxygen and all that stuff to it. What happens is that the sugar matrix provides those channels and then they can kind of just put in a bath. But it's still nothing like printing an actual organ. It's mm -hmm. just a collection of cells and almost, a, it, like, if you're looking at cells that make tissues, that make organs, we're kind of printing tissues, but not really anywhere near close to printing organs. And does the body reject that kind of thing if it, if it doesn't come from your own tissue? I don't even know if they've tried putting it in a body. Right now it's literally just a Petri dish with a, a blob, a gelatinous cube of living tissue that they can then use for who knows what. It's, it's, it's research projects now, not applications. We're the very beginning of the infancy of being able to create tissues, lay tissues down. Um, it's not something that seems practical at this point, but maybe yeah. five years off. Five years off. But actually doing an entire human being, would you put that in the realm of fictional? Definitely fictional. Definitely, Definitely fictional. fictional. All right, that's the good word from Will Smith. So, according to Will, it's a little easier to make chocolate than it is to make a super babe. But just for fun, let's say we could make this person. I have Lacey Green here to explain the anatomical issues with this girl once she is created. Take it away, Lacey. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on the show, Lacey. Thank you for having me, Veronica. So tell us about Sex Plus and also what you're doing here at Revision 3. Um, so Sex Plus is my YouTube web show thing, and basically it's just a sex education project that I started to help question attitudes about sexuality and body image and relationships. Um, just a safe space for young people to come discuss sexuality issues. And so I was kind of pulled into the Rev3 family uh, through the DNews project that we're doing, which is basically like a science news channel. It's pretty fun. It's amazing. Uh, so I did bring you here uh, to talk about anatomy, actually. Uh, so wouldn't Gary <laughs> and Wyatt have to know a lot about female anatomy in order to kind of recreate it in the way it's supposed to work? Um, well, that's the funny thing about this movie, is that they don't really seem to know a lot about anything. 
and they managed to pull this off. So, you know, it looked like they were just feeding like magazine clippings and stuff. So oh, okay. Maybe if it's just, you know, if they have the right magazines. You know what, you know what I'm saying? saying? Wink, wink, yeah. nudge, nudge, sorry, Fagoa. You can pull it off. She's a sexual creature mm -hmm. when she comes out of the computer womb. Yeah. Um, but wouldn't she be a virgin? Well, this is an interesting question because this whole movie is kind of like a big male fantasy, mm -hmm. right? So the fact that she is able to be sort of sexually alluring while also being very virginal is sort of like a very stereotypical male fantasy. You want someone who presents themselves as very modest and ladylike, but also like a freak in the sheets. Right? <laughs> so say this happened in real life. Uh, if, if two guys, two best friends fell in love with the same perfect woman, how would they handle that? Well, I think it kind of depends on the relationship of the two guys. If they are emotionally mature, ideally, you would want to be honest about it, right? And talk about it together and be like, look, you know, kind of have feelings. You have feelings. What would be the best that thing for like, us to do right now? That sounds you know? like a lot of dudes talking about their feelings. It does. It does. But I have faith that this can happen. I do. I believe in guys' ability to talk about their feelings. And I think honestly, in this sort of situation, it might lead to resentment if you don't actually talk about it. You mm -hmm. know, it could just become like this big competitive butting heads thing, which I guess is another way to work it out. Maybe not ideal, but how a lot of people do it, for sure. Well, thank you so much for clearing all of this up and where can everyone follow your stuff online? Yeah, so just uh, check me out at youtube.com slash Lacey Green. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. This one is definitely getting a massive fictional. Scientists are currently using cloning techniques like artificial embryo twinning that basically mimic the natural process of making twins. Now I said scientists, not two kids from the 80s. So unfortunately, Gary and Wyatt would have needed some DNA and a PhD in molecular biology in order to recreate another human. Nice try Hollywood, and a big fat I'm sorry to horny teenagers everywhere. Eh, there's always girlfriend pillows. <laughs> and do you want your face on Fact or Fictional? Let me know what tech you want to see right here on this show. And if it's tricky enough, you might just see yourself on a future episode. This week, I'm giving away an Apple TV. In order to win, leave a video comment below telling me what video game technology you want to see debunked. But not Portal. We're working on that one, I promise. If your answer appears on the show, you're the winner. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Fact or Fictional on Tech Feed. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and go watch me and Mark Watson argue over the Wii U on Soldier's Tech Battlefield. I'll see you over there. What do you think about some of those games? I'm, I'm pretty done with Mario at this point. I think I'm going to incur the wrath of Nintendo fanboys all over the internet, but I just, I think they need to move on. I think it's time.